Hi, I'm John. And I'm also John. And this is where we typically do all of our work. But today, we're going to have a good old-fashioned shop swap. In our previous build-off challenge, to say that John won would be an understatement. I stopped counting because it was getting demoralizing. And as the loser, I have to treat him to an exact change meal at the Golden Corral. And I'm getting pretty hungry, and it's about time that you paid up. Off we go. Now, unlike this fine establishment, where the only rules seem to be buffet all day, let's establish some guidelines so you all can properly vote at the end of this video. These builds must be a liquor cabinet of sorts, contain a hidden feature, and we only have three days to complete them. Now, if John wins, I'll be stocking his boomer bar with the finest wines and bourbons. And if I somehow redeem myself, though very, very unlikely, in typical millennial fashion, we'll be defiling my cabinet with the ever popular white claws, which are about as mediocre as this meal. Oh, I don't think it's that way at all. Let's get to building. Okay, for this project, I sourced the different parts of the project from different types of wood, barn wood, an oak pallet, old flooring. You told me that it's primitive building. Yeah, it's definitely a primitive building. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would say this is primitive. This is as close to primitive as you're gonna get. It's... Last time I used equipment like this was in my seventh grade shop class, and who knows how long ago that was. So, John is going to be helping me with certain tools so I don't cut off a finger. But I'm starting this project by cutting these pieces to size for the frame. Four legs. Now I'm going to rip each of these into as many two and a half inch wide rails as I can, and then I'll cut to length later on in the process. Anyway, there we go. Cut the, uh, the rails. Time for some rabbits. Time for some rabbit. It always makes sense to run a little test on your equipment setup. This ended up being a little too shallow, so I readjusted it to make it fit better. Okay, so I've cut rabbits in these four rails to accommodate a floating panel. The panels will be made up of a glue up of these 3 8 inch thick oak pieces from a pallet and float in between these rabbits. You know, when you come to think of it, just being able to find the perfect board, more or less, growing in the in nature, or I should say growing on a pallet. Just think of all the work that it saves you in terms of resawing, planing, and jointing. I've got all these uh, pieces that I need to glue up for the panels, and while they're gluing up, I'll be assembling the part of the carcass. So how are you liking the shop so far? Well, you know, I like it. But it's, it's very efficient, and it's oftentimes very intimidating and delivers a lot more precision than I deserve. <laughs> In keeping with the spirit of a budget-friendly shop, I decided to use one of the cheaper hardwoods available, red oak, which was really cool in builder-grade homes in the 90s. Not so much anymore, but I have a trick up my sleeve to make it look less red oaky, or Fannie Mae oak. Aside from the time constraints, the real question for me is, can I build something that is higher quality with limited tools? And limited tools doesn't just mean less. In some cases, tools have limitations. I'm looking at you, Mr. Ryobi Table Saw. But we will trudge forward in the name of science and YouTube views. In the previous challenge, it was clear that most viewers were not a fan of the mid-century modern aesthetic. So to change it up, I modeled this also mid-century modern design to appease the masses. I'm cutting pieces to size for the panels that will form the case of the cabinet. Because this is S3S lumber, meaning it's been surfaced on three sides, you only need to run the rough edge through the table saw and start gluing. Now, there are some minor gaps thanks to our friend Mr. Ryobi, but 
those should disappear after sanding. So I think if you asked me before what I was gonna most miss about my shop, the easy answer would have been the tools. But I'm quickly realizing the tools are actually not as important as I thought. The assembly table, the clamps and all those things, that's what seems to be the thing I'm gonna miss most. So it's not the flattest panel I've ever built, but it's a panel. We'll see what happens. Sadly, John does not have a track saw and I'll need a way to cut these panels to final size. So I'm whipping together a quick guide for his circular saw with scrap plywood. And also making a mental note to remind him it's time to change the blade on this because holy moly, it was struggling. I hope one of the takeaways from this video is you shouldn't be discouraged when you see shops with more elaborate setups online. Many of you probably don't know this, but I got started building just like this on my patio and I made some decent furniture. Elaborate shops simply save you time and some headaches here or there. Okay, excuse the cheeseburger. I'm well behind schedule and eating lunch on the go, but I've got these four panels all set. Again, it took a lot longer than I was anticipating. I'm gonna show you a really neat way to assemble these together using just this router. But first, let me finish said cheeseburger. Woodworking is a very predictable craft, but when you combine a healthy dose of complacency, moving too fast, things can go wrong. So I guess even the mistakes then become predictable. Although that might be an oxymoron, I don't know, but I digress. The point is, you're watching the second rabbit get cut, and as expected, something happens and I ended up cutting right through the top of my piece. It's not the first time it's happened, and it certainly won't be the last. Oh, son of a bitch. I guess it's important to let you know how that happened too, before I forget. So I've never used this router before. I guess I have, but it's been about 10 years. And I forgot that this is basically the lock that holds it in place. It had slipped out. I didn't think to double check it. And the, basically the base just slid. So yeah. I gotta regroup here and figure out a plan. I don't know, I guess it'll just have to be sure. I, I don't know, we'll figure it out. So you decided to make a design change and use a piece of barn wood for the top panel instead of gluing a panel together. Any reason why? I, I ran across this hunting for the rest of the lumber and I'll be artistic, I guess. It spoke to me and I started thinking, okay, you know, maybe I need to replace a six inch humdrum panel with something a little more exciting. And exciting it is. And exciting it is. And you can play whack a worm when they pop out of there. <laughs> <laughs> to keep this simple and moving forward, I decided to use pocket screws to assemble the frame together which is something I'm very familiar with, and John assures me it's more than strong enough to hold my cheap wine. Looks great. Side kicks. Okay, I just messed around on SketchUp with the proportions. I'm gonna have to make it more narrow, but I think I actually like the look of it better than I did before. So we're gonna pretend like this was the design all along, and we'll just call it a Bob Ross happy accident. Back to the build. At the end of our last challenge, I gifted John this Jackery SG2000 Plus, and there were a lot of people asking if he liked it and actually used it for camping. Well, I'm happy to report yes and yes. In fact, he took this bad boy on a couple month long trips to escape the paparazzi due to his newfound YouTube stardom. Thankfully, it has a crazy capacity of 2000 watt hours of power and features a nice mix of DC and AC outlets so you can power anything from an iPhone to a refrigerator or a backyard workshop. And the best thing is you can stack up to five of these battery packs and each one adds an additional 2000 watt hours. If you're a big time camper like John, you can also use the optional solar panel to charge these and it is whisper quiet. Will the Jackery help you from routing through the top of your table? Absolutely not, but it will be there in the event of outages or just weekend fun. So follow the link in the description below to pick one up for yourself and thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video. The next element in this is to fabricate a, the back. And I thought that the wood that was on the pallet that I picked up was nice and thin and would make a good back and it's certainly unremarkable. 
and a back needs to be unremarkable. Typically, I have to work with the wood as is, but having access to John's tools, like the jointer, allows me to easily turn something irregular into something more refined. The real question is, day two, do you trust that measurement now? No, I don't ever trust it. I don't ever trust, I don't, <laughs> I don't even trust myself. Thing is just unbelievable. That's like a freaking glove. That fits perfectly. As far as glue ups go, look at this squeeze out. That's near perfection. That's your, uh, the poorest part of a uh, palette. Unremarkable, but a good performer. Good job. While the um, back panel is drying, I think we're going to now assemble the carcass of this one cabinet. Got these panels that we glued up, and um, you know, having precision equipment makes the job go so much easier. It's not that you can't do this with, you know, like my little Ryobi, but this piece of equipment makes it a lot easier. Finishes off a lot better. Got a little rain yesterday. Okay, a couple things. Number one, you're gonna see a lot of different outdoor sets today. We're trying to dodge the sun. It's not fun filming in direct sunlight. And the second thing, in the last video, all of you guys jumped on me about not using fasteners like screws and you said that my table is going to fall apart well i'll let the non-woodworkers in on a little secret a joint like this that is cut reasonably well is more than strong enough my buddy scott walsh did a great video testing how much force it would take to break it and theoretically i could put a couple kegs on here and still be fine now college john might worry about that but not this trying to be an adult version of john this will last a lifetime, which is plenty good enough in my book, because I'll likely be sick of looking at it in four years. While that dries, it's time to work on the doors. Now, I consider myself a very fortunate person, and videos like this are a bit surreal. I get to hang out with my cool neighbor while doing a hobby we both love. It's crazy. Now, along those lines, the number one question that I get asked is, how do I get started on YouTube? So I teamed up with some ridiculously talented channels and formed the creator course. Our goal is to answer those burning questions and remove the roadblocks, which will fast track your content creation side hustle towards generating at least $1,000 a month. And this isn't just for woodworking channels. You could do anything you're passionate about. Cam from Blacktail Studio will walk you through the fundamentals of content creation. We have Chris from Four Eyes Furniture who teaches a masterclass on knowing what it takes to create winning videos. There's Brad from Fix This, Build That that dives deep into multiple evergreen streams of revenue. Sam from DIY Huntress will introduce you to the world of sponsorships so that you can land your first paying deal and understand the power of converting views into income. And I'll be sharing with you how to use the power of feedback and the YouTube dashboard to consistently make better content plus much more. But Sunday, October 29th at midnight, enrollment will close as the course goes live inside your account the following Monday. So if you're interested, click the link in the description below and we will see you there. All right, we are motoring along this morning. John actually just left to go grab some lunch downtown, but I thought I would share a funny story while I had a moment. The morning after we posted the last video, I was chit-chatting with John out in the yard as we often do, and he said something to me, it really stuck with me. And it was in jest, but it was along the lines of, you know, maybe Ryobi will see this video and they'll send me a new table saw because he's wanting to upgrade this. now. Not that there's anything wrong with upgrading the Ryobi with another Ryobi, but I think we can do a little bit better. And again, this has been fine for this build. So last night I went and bought this new saw that I'm gonna surprise him with at the end of the video. Hopefully he likes it. Okay, the plan was originally to use pocket screws to secure these into place on the frame. That was a stupid plan. Really thin piece, it's end grain, it instantly cracked when I was doing a test but I have a new idea. I'm gonna glue these into place, clamp it, and I'll pin them on the backside later. 
it'll make sense in a bit. Just stay with me. To give the base of this cabinet a little extra pizzazz, I'm adding a slight taper to all the feet with this handy jig that John has. Is it as perfectly dialed in as mine? No, sir. But it gets the job done and helps this design feel a touch more considered, which is what custom furniture making is all about. To reiterate what I said earlier, a lack of tools should never be a limitation, only an opportunity to try something new. But that's more than enough rambling, glue, and chip chopping for day two. This is the glued up panel that's going to be the shelves. We're going to use the, a track saw for this. And here I go again with a new piece of equipment that's going to spoil me forever. I can use the crosscut sled to cut the panels to their final width. The rectangular shelf still doesn't fit the inside of the frame because of the way it's constructed. So I need to do my best to mark out four notches so this will sit flush with the legs and the rabbit. Even though we're not making Swiss watches here, this part is the most difficult of anything that I've done so far. Okay, it's taken my entire lifetime to get to this point where hopefully this fits the first time. Well, what do you know? Not perfect, but only the cockroaches will know the difference. I had already spent a good bit of time sanding these panels with the orbital sander, but this oak was so hard I still had these ridges. Normally I would just live with it, but John introduced me to a drum sander and it was life-changing. I needed something interesting for the top. John just happened to have some oak boards that uh, he wasn't using and uh, offered them to me and of course I took them. We glued these up and now we're ready to cut this down to the uh, finished size. The end is in sight. We now have a top. Does it fit? It fits perfectly. All right, we are in the final stretch here. And this is always the point in the build where you think, oh, I don't have that much to do. And then it just always takes infinitely longer than you think. But I'm going to be optimistic today and say, we're going to get it done. I always find it's easier to get the perfect side stretcher length if you wait until the front rails and feet are clamped in place, rather than cutting it all at once earlier in the build. That prevents any unexpected wonkiness, which happens. Another one of my favorite tips is to let glue be your friend with pocket screws, especially with pieces like this that can be difficult to manage and keep square. So I'm gluing it all together now, and I'll come back later to drive in the screws once the glue has set up enough to act like de facto clamps. If you plan it all out well enough, that leaves time to keep plugging along on other small checklist items, like drilling out holes to accept the door hinges using a Forstner bit, which was not fun without my standard jig and adding oak edge banding to the shelf front that hides the plywood veneers and looks extra classy. Although this sweatpants and t-shirt lover doesn't know much about being classy. But 30 minutes is more than enough time to come back and drive in the screws for the base without anything wiggling around. Okay, we have our base put together here and something that I wanna point out, you'll notice where the base meets the cabinet, there's a bit of a gap and ideally, there shouldn't be a gap here if these were jointed and everything really well, but we have to work with what we've got. And rather than try and hide this, I think the best thing to do is actually accentuate it even more. So I'm going to use John's basically step stool that doubles as a router table, add a little rabbit, which will increase the shadow line all the way around and it'll be as if we planned it. The joys of working outside, currently in a rain delay. We'll be back. For the drawer, I'm just going to be simple. And I installed a, a three quarter inch rail for a dado that's cut into the side of the drawer to mate with. That sounds nasty. <laughs> My first inclination was to use the router table to cut the dado, but John suggested using the table saw and I couldn't quite imagine how that went, but he showed me a neat trick to keep 
flipping the board around, which keeps the dado dead center on the drawer. This was my first drawer I had ever done, but I learned it's just a box without a top. To make it simple, I used basic butt joints and brad nails with scrap plywood that was cut to size and glued to the bottom. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing, see how these things slides. Oh, how about that? Smooth. Smooth. You seem mm. surprised. I'm very surprised. So we're not in my shop anymore. What uh, happened? I decided to bring it over here in my shop. Uh, your shop doesn't have the environmental air system that my shop has. And I wanted to apply some stain to even it out and to spray some lacquer. I have to say it looks great and you finished early again. Well, thank you for the compliment, and I had no idea. Hey, John. Yeah. You don't happen to have a block plane or something, do you? Sure. That would be lovely. Let me get it. How thank about this? Thank you, sir. Well, that's an oldie, huh? It is. <laughs> How old is it? Oh, I guess I was a teenager. It was over 60 years ago. 60 years ago. And when is the last time you sharpened it? That's the real question. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Probably back in the 70s sometime. <laughs> okay. That's all. It works. That's all. all right. Time to start the finishing process is going to be a process of sorts. But I mentioned earlier that the best thing about using red oak is making it not look like red oak. So I'm gonna start by dyeing this black and then we'll do something else on top of it to give it another effect, but this first. Oh yeah. So long, red oak. Okay, got this about halfway done so far. Unfortunately, I've got a sick kid, so I need to take care of said sick kid. I'm going to stop the clock for today and I'm going to pick the clock back up to tomorrow so that my wife doesn't kill me. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, welcome to day. I'll be honest, I've lost track at this point between sick kids. John's washer and dryer just went out, so we had to deal with that. It's been raining nonstop. I mean, it hasn't rained in months, has it? It decided to rain a lot while we were working on this video, but here's where we're at. We've got a dyed cabinet and it is jet black at the moment. Now I could leave this thing jet black, but I want to try and give it a little bit more of a unique look. Let's call it that. Also, I think the black is just too boring for what we're going for overall. So I'm going to try something called ceruzing on this. I've never actually done it before, but I think it should look good. I mean, it looks good on the pictures on Pinterest and Pinterest absolutely never lies. You might be asking, why did you leave these grates open? Well, I actually have a plan for once because this is the same mesh that they use on Fender guitar cabs. So I'm gonna put this behind it, give it somewhat of a cool look and stick with this whole musical theme that I have going on, which you will see in the finished product. I always feel like I walk away with an observation unrelated to woodworking after finishing up a video. And we are creatures of habit. John and I swapped shops and we're thrown completely out of our comfort zones, so we defaulted back to what we are comfortable with, meaning we made roughly the same pieces of furniture that we would have built with our own tools. Also, side note, I was watching that sick daughter yesterday and I let her have some fun decorating the back panel, which she is beyond thrilled about. And nothing screams liquor cabinet like a five-year-old rainbow painting. But as I was saying, like woodworking, humans are predictable, and I honestly don't know if that's good or bad, and maybe it doesn't matter. Because maybe the lesson is not all observations need to have some grand conclusion. Perhaps you can just build a rainbow liquor cabinet with your awesome friend and neighbor that hopefully brought viewers some good laughs and enjoyment. And now, the moment of truth.
Womit? Not too shabby. It's time for you all to let us know in the comments if it's going to be wine or white claws. But to properly vote, you need to see those hidden features. First up, John's Boomer Bourbon Bar with an undetectable hinged top revealing this perfect hiding spot. <laughs> oh, I hadn't seen the Toby picture yet. That's great. Toby's intoxicants. <laughs> That's perfect. That is not going to be easy to beat, but what about my millennial mid-century music cabinet? John, could you pass me the whiskey, please? That's right, folks. These bottles sit on a pressure-sensitive paddle that was routed into the shelf and plays through this speaker. And a special thanks to my buddy Scott Walsh for bringing my vision to life because I can barely charge my own iPhone. We're not quite done yet. Hang on a second. John, I got a surprise for you. Uh-oh. Since you're in the prime of your blossoming YouTube career, I wanna make sure that your digits are safe and oh I my God. wanna thank you for putting up with me oh. while we film these videos, so. This is your new saw stop, compact table saw. That is absolutely amazing. I cannot believe this. I am without words, but I am speechless. If you have other ideas for fun challenges between the two of us, let us know in the comments below. But until then, we're gonna celebrate. We'll see ya.